Hello everyone, I'm a machine learning engineer at Amazon. Before this, I was a biology student for 12 years. In the summer of 2020, I decided to quit my PhD without a plan for the next step. At the end of that same year, I became a machine learning engineer and I felt grateful for all the opportunities I got so far on this journey. However, if I woke up tomorrow morning and suddenly lost my job, here is how I would get a better one. First, I will focus on what I already have and play by the rule. If they ask for lead code, I will prepare lead code. If they ask for Docker, PyTorch, or AWS, I would spend my time learning those. So the first step is to figure out what they are really looking for. I will go ahead and find 10 or 20 job opportunities that I actually want and bookmark the job description. Then I will make a spreadsheet to answer the four questions. The first one is, what are the most common technologies they are all looking for? And second is, what kind of projects can I do to prove I am familiar with those technologies? Third one, what are the most common soft skills they are looking for? And the last one is, can I tell a story to demonstrate I have those soft skills? If I can't, can I create opportunities given what I have right now to practice and demonstrate those skills? Those stories don't have to come from the exact same technical background. They just need to show your personal leadership and communication skills. Since I don't have a job right now, can I provide my service for free so that I can be part of something, so I can have the environment because all those skills require your interaction with other people. You have to be part of something. It could be nonprofit or it could be open source. All these things do not need permission. You can just go ahead and do it. And that's how I did it. During those process, there's no way you're gonna have less expertise or less experience. And all those will show in your interview. Doing this job market research yourself serves two purposes. The first is data gave you confidence in decision making. Your research certainly will be incomplete, but the fact that you researched everything yourself gives you the saliency of facts and that motivates you better. Think this way, the fact you are watching this video right now is not because what I'm sharing is the most accurate or complete, but because what I'm sharing is real, it's from my personal experience. When communicating with a human, stories almost always work better than statistics. The second purpose is the process of collecting data can bring you insights that you were not looking for initially. And those insights can prompt you to ask a better question and understand the situation better. When searching for my first job, I noticed the different companies use different cloud providers. So I started wondering how a company choose among GCP, AWS, or Azure. Then I started learning about their market share, their service history, and their customer acquisition strategy. And that eventually led my interest in earning an AWS certificate. Second, I will take each interview as a stepping stone. Whether this opportunity is you got the job itself or just one interview, treat them as a learning opportunity rather than an achievement to conquer can depressurize the situation for you. Thinking of each opportunity as a stepping stone for your next move helps you in several ways. First, the long-term horizon can help you think strategically because when you start the thinking for your next move, you are encouraged to understand the bigger context and ask deeper questions. Second, it helps you to stay calm by focusing on the part you can control. This is very important when the stake is seemingly high. Since you have more control over the learning rather than the result, you are less likely to feel panic during this process. Last, it also helps you to identify the transferable part among each interview, and this way your overall return compounds most. Because the result of interview is an external validation, you may be very good at the job, but for some reason, and you just aren't hired. If you rely on this external validation, it can be very discouraging because any external validation comes with two traits. One is they are lagging. You may have changed the inside, but no one can observe that. And second, they can be very noisy because they come from other people. There is a lot of judgment from others rather than from yourself. Therefore, you have to define your internal standards, what you think it takes to be there and have you done those. To be able to define those standards, you likely will have to suffer humiliation and failures. It sounds awful, but once you get used to focus on growing rather than the immediate reward, it gives you more freedom and control. Control. Third, I will ignore those nonsense opportunities. I remember how excited I was when I got my first opportunity to interview a machine learning job, but very soon it turns out to be a scam. At least I stopped there because it 
it's clear it is a scam. However, there are many scams that disguise themselves as an opportunity. Here is a classical example. After working two years, I can tell this is practically impossible for someone to be competent in all the skills this job is asking for, or at least not for the price they are willing to pay for. So if something seems unreasonable, either in a good way or bad way, rather than bending yourself towards it, consider it's not the reality, or at least not the reality you want to be part of. If you have all the good intention and you did the hard work, the things still don't work, then consider this bug is systematic, it's not from you. So if you are facing a systematic bug, that means this problem is scalable, it's shared by many people. So instead of fixating on your personal issue, you may be in the best position to see a startup opportunity. You have no idea how much anxieties and self-doubt I had when I just started out my journey as a machine learning engineer. But with the help of different resources, I managed to not be taken over by them and stick to my schedule of doing lead code and mock interview anyway. I hope you find this video helpful. If so, please give me a thumb up. That will help keep me motivated a lot. If you feel YouTube video is distracting or too loud sometimes, I also publish my content on Medium and on my own website so you can subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time. <laughs>